Of course, one of the most frequently imaged nebulae in the night skies is M42, the Great Orion Nebula. It is observed in the winter skies in the constellation of Orion and is perhaps the brightest nebula visible from Earth. Seen even with the naked eye, it shines at magnitude 4. Earlier this year, back on March 9th, on a cold winter evening, I was out at my favorite imaging site, Kawawa Fuji Park, near my home in Yokohama. It was a bit breezy, so I even created a wind barrier with a camping tarp draped across the safety fence on the elevated overlook. At 7 p.m., just after sunset, there was a spectacular silhouetted view of Mount Fuji and the rugged Japanese Alps to the distant west. On this night, my imaging OTA consisted of the Zviboni SV50380 ED refractor with a 0.8x reducer to give a 448mm focal length. I used the ASI 533MC color planetary camera and tracking was provided by the AM5 mount. When I started imaging, the target was around 40 degrees high in the sky and guiding was also employed with everything controlled by the ASI Air Plus Astro Computer. For this experiment, I brought along with me four different filters, each of them shown here. I decided that it would be ideal to utilize a single exposure time of 30 seconds for each filter choice. As already mentioned, the target is incredibly bright, especially in the central core area of the M42 nebula known as the trapezium. These are all 2-inch filters and as you can see come from three different suppliers. I personally bought and own all of these products. I first focused each filter on a bright star using a Batonoff mask every time just before collecting any data. And here are those images. They are either 10 or 15 minutes of total integration time each. These images did not require any gradient removal were stretched and processed in GIMP and were not subject to any denoise software. The colors are all natural. This was simply processed. As you can see, they all look a bit different. The Optolong L Extreme filter is the only narrowband filter and all the others are considered to be broadband but very different in their wavelength transparency profiles. Among these, I felt that the Antlia quadband filter results appealed to me the most. It also displayed the most and brightest star images. However, with only 30 second exposures, I felt that the star shapes and sizes were under control. In the past, I used this filter for much longer exposure imaging on other nebulae and was mostly dissatisfied with the bloated star images. But here at 30 seconds exposure time, the results looked reasonable. As you might know, the Antlia quadband filter has that name because of its four peak areas of transmittance in the light spectrum. Its broadest peak is in the near infrared region between about 770 and 920 nanometers. This spectrum is not visible to the human eye, however it is detectable by the IMX533 sensor in the camera I was employing. In fact, all of the colored pixels had up to about 30% quantum efficiency on these infrared wavelengths. So I tried to develop this Antlia quadband image to the best of my capabilities. I used Starnet for star removal, GIMP for processing the nebula and the starry image independently, and then subjected the recombined image to topaz denoise. Here is that processed image taken with the Antlia quadband filter. It was not bad. In fact, it was pretty good. However, I was just not fully satisfied with the depth or shade of the colors. So I decided to mix and match the raw subframe images, restack them together, and color process them to create combination results. Actually, all of the filters combined together looked pretty good. But I felt these two images were the most highly complementary one narrowband and one broadband. Displayed are the spectrum transmittance profiles, showing that both filters are transparent to light at the hydrogen alpha and oxygen 2 wavelengths, but the quad band adds a lot of additional signal in the deep violet and infrared. 
When put together, there were 25 minutes of light frames that I combined, stacked in Deep Sky Stacker, did star removal with StarNet++, stretched and processed the nebula and star images separately, carefully and differentially stretched regions of the nebulae to balance brightness and not overexpose the trapezium area, and then recombined the starry and nebula images followed by topaz denoise. And here is that final result. This seemed to be the best combination of raw image data. Shown in this slide are all four again, along with the final image for your inspection. Personally, I have only ever done imaging with one-shot color cameras. I have never done narrowband or RGB imaging in monochrome. Someday, I will progress to that, I suspect. But for now, I am learning that filter selection is a critical consideration in one-shot imaging that is specific to both the nebula and the light pollution level at your imaging site. What works best for one nebula in the Yokohama area under Bordel Class 7 Plus skies may not be the best for that same nebula if imaging under Bordel Class 4 skies in Izu or Chiba areas, for example. And sometimes a combination approach may actually provide the most beautiful and balanced results. I think this is the best image of any nebula that I have ever taken in my brief three-year career with amateur astrophotography. Of course, my use of the word best is a totally subjective judgment. I did not provide any technical assessment of signal to noise or star sizes or any other scientific analysis. You might even prefer a different filter result than the one I presented here that appeals to me. But I am definitely satisfied with this photo and hence it is probably unlikely that I will image this target again in the near future. There are so many more to challenge. However, with new equipment, new filters, or other new approaches, well, who knows? Thanks for watching Astrophotography Japan. My name is Paul Cheesegel, and I am an astrophotographer.